All right, we're set when you guys are. You guys want me to open this up with a quick statement and then you guys can run with it? Obviously a very exciting trip for the team. This is a challenge. This is a super regional. They're one of the top teams in the country. That Everybody in the industry will tell you that. They run. They're talented. They have two Team USA relievers. This is a handful. It's a great atmosphere. Kirk does a great job. He's been there for a while, not only as a head coach, but pitching coach previously. It's a good program. Like This is a super regional atmosphere. The environment the talent that we're facing, it doesn't get any more challenging than this. And it's a great test for our program. You know, the first true trip, I, Tuesday is, you know, a midweek trip. This is really a trip and you get to evaluate and assess what you see out of your opponent three games in a row on the road. You have to deal with crowd that is not for you. They're against you and it's different in the environment and the wind and the surface and the bullpen and everything that goes into walking into a different venue and trying to figure out a way to win. And you have to try to do that three consecutive days. So this will be a true test. They're extremely skilled and talented. One of clearly one of the best teams in the country. So, you know, a great opportunity and a tremendous challenge. Like what did you like um, about Tuesday, the way the guys handled just being away from Tallahassee? I like the machine oriented approach. I, I told them when you're in these worlds and these worlds that you play in on the road, as the stakes get higher, you can look at our, our road schedule is probably the most difficult I've ever seen. When you look at where we're going, starting with where we're going today. So taking the things you do and not changing and not wavering and walking off the airplane, off the bus into foreign territory and functioning like you function at home is something you have to do if you're going to be a nationally prominent organization. And we and we have to do that. And this is as good a challenge as anybody will face this weekend on the road. Obviously, I love our team. You just are going into a situation where you're playing a top five type team on the road in a new environment for us as coaches and players. So um, I did like the way we handled Tuesday, and we'll have to replicate that and continue to do it for three consecutive games. Were you, uh, as last weekend went on, monitoring the weekend TCU had, especially at the plate, how many runs they produced against some pretty good teams out there in Arlington? Or is that something you kind of didn't see, I guess, until maybe Sunday when you get a chance to stand? And just what stands out about, I mean, the start they're off to offensively, especially? Well, just the athleticism. And no, I did not spend any time on this until we got through Tuesday. Like Tuesday for me was a very critical game. And then I turned my attention to TCU yesterday and clearly, obviously, at this point now. Um, now our assistant coaches and staff is preparing the scouting reports. They were tinkering with it, but I didn't even want to talk about this at all until we got through our first weekend and our Tuesday. That's the most important part. and then trying to make modifications in what your game planning is versus who you play next. I just don't ever want us as coaches or the players to look past the importance of going over to JU and beating a team that was a regional team. They were, and you have to go over there and perform. And I don't ever want the guys distracted, nor myself, with what's coming next. So, honestly, I didn't pay attention to what TCU had done until – like we get to this point now where you're trying to game plan and strategize a little bit, getting ready for tomorrow night. Coach, I, th I think it was your second year, maybe at Notre Dame where you, you went on the road pretty early, played a pretty good Wake Forest team. Do you, do you recall, I, I know it's a really super long season, but do you recall any lessons sort of learned in late February in a tough road environment, not environment, but at least a tough road opponent that paid dividends later on in the season? Well, I think it's the way we approach the process and the journey in general and how organized we try to be just to simply practice. And then I think you tweak what you need to tweak when you get on the bus and the plane and you try to keep things focused and organized and limit the distractions. So you see as close product wise on the road, what you see when we play at home and that 
that team you speak of, I, I think, honestly, didn't lose a road series the entire year until we went to Mississippi State for the Super Regional. And to be honest, probably should have should have won that. But um, it's toughness. And you, know, you have to have talented players at this level. Make no mistake. Like, if you're not talented enough to compete at this level, you won't. But then it's the toughness and the focus of the guys. So I think coming out of the indoor practice facility at Notre Dame, having never stepped outside until we got to wait for us to play, it's a little bit different. So you feel more equipped to go on the road having <laughs> having actually been outside and taken fly balls and seen balls off the bat and, and play a little bit. So, um you know, I, I feel like we're prepared, but you know you're walking into one of, if not the most talented teams in the country. So um, this is a new group. I hope that some of the things you referred to in, in that initial run at Notre Dame, I, I hope that some of that carries over to how we've prepared this group. Hey, Coach, this is maybe more of a philosophical question for down the road, but, you know, TCU just playing a neutral tournament, Arkansas, Missouri, Vandy, could you see Florida State and some group of schools doing a neutral in the Sunshine State next year down the road, something like that? Yeah, I, I could. And I think I actually have one on the books way down the road. Um, I think it's in Arlington. Now it's like 2026. So some, you're doing the scheduling so far out. But, yes, I, I could. Um, I think the maturity of the program – can facilitate that maybe easier in future years than right now. And, and I will say I, I've played in a lot of those. And early in the season, it does help the group to have a consistent pregame timeline. And when you start to early in the year throw three other teams or more into the equation, you most certainly tweak the timeline of the events and you don't get to go on the field and take batting practice at least where the games are being played, and you don't get to take a full pregame infield outfield. And sometimes the early preparation, especially when we're new as coaches to what we're doing with the players, I think that can be tricky, um, like out of the gate. So I'll look at doing that down the road. And yeah, like there, there are creative ways we can do things in this geographic region to combine, like you say, in-state schools or conference versus conference schools. I think all of that is great. Um, I, I didn't build the schedule this year, and I really probably had my hand in the finishing touches of next year just because you have to stay so far out. So, yeah, I would look at that. It's just not something I could pull off like immediately for those reasons I spoke of. It's it's obviously going to be a bit a bit bigger of a stage this weekend, and probably a tougher pitcher, pitching staff you're going against. But I guess how encouraging was, I mean, seeing the offense travel like it did on Tuesday. And what did that, did that teach you anything about this group of guys? Well, I, I saw some base hit bunting and some bunt attempts that I really liked. It is nice to, to see the variety and the power and the extra base hitting. And um, we didn't run the bases. Jay, you didn't give me a tremendous opportunity. I think we stole one base. They did a nice job of, of making it challenging to run the bases, but I did like overall the approach. I, I, I thought up and down the lineup, other than our poor DH spot, that was a tough one for our DH spot Tuesday night. But I, I did like it, and it's going to have to continue to grow, and it's not going to be that easy. So what we're going to see in, in this type of series is some of the nuances and more of the strategic offense is probably going to factor in as much as just the raw extra base hitting. I hope the extra base hitting is in play, but um, you know they're going to be – so equipped in their bullpen, so dynamic that you're going to have to scratch and claw and maybe do more situational stuff to try to scratch runs where, you know, Tuesday it was beautiful to see the guys stand in there and deliver some big blows. And the wind was blowing out. I, I know it's going to be breezy. I haven't looked at the direction of the wind and how that's going to impact it because, you know, that changes things based on where it's blowing and how. But you know, you, you look at this and roadmap would tell you we're probably going to have to be creative to try to find ways to manufacture. But I loved what I saw Tuesday and Sunday and, quite frankly, the, the whole first weekend. Like some of uh, the young guys you have have gotten off to really good starts. And, you know, we all know baseball is such a game of failure. Um, do you are you kind of curious how those guys are going to handle those moments when things aren't going as well? And that, or do you feel like 
by what you guys do during the fall and in the preseason, you already have an idea of that. You do worry about the young guys that haven't been through it. And they got off to good starts, especially Diamas and Cam. Um, you know, Jamie and Ben Barrett, just okay. Like, should be better. But, you know, I talked to our strength and conditioning and our, our training staff yesterday about some of these young guys haven't played nine-inning baseball games before. They're not going to have played in this atmosphere. The traveling, some of the things that your body and mind aren't quite used to. I do worry about that with the young players. Like, I know what it was like for me as a freshman. You get to game 25 or 30, and that's what you're really used to playing. And the eighth and ninth innings are different. The pregame is different. The travel is different. The weightlifting is different. So trying to find time to rest them a little bit and be smart for what we did at practice yesterday, we had to, we tried to have a really short practice. Um, I'm not trying to go to TCU stadium at eight 45 or nine o'clock to have a practice tonight. I felt like that was too much. And in part because of those young guys and, and also the rest of the group as a whole. But yes, those, those young kids are very important. They're obviously talented and we just need to keep nurturing them and bringing them along, knowing they're going to do some things that are exceptional. And they're going to also go, go through some things that, um, the young guys go through and that will be the first time they experienced it. And it's going to be the first time they experienced it with the nation watching them. So just try to care for the little pups. Coach, I know you have really lofty goals, uh, but, but if you go out there and win this series, you, you guys will probably finally be ranked here in the early part of the season. Again, I know you got really big goals other than being ranked in, in February and March, but would you like to give these kids a kind of a, a sample of the success and, and get some of this sort of spotlight back on the Florida State baseball program as you take over here in year one? Yeah, this is a huge series. And I told him yesterday at practice, this is a super region. That's that's what this is. And we will go on the road for – I mean, you look at our schedule. I mean, you, I feel like most of our trips are super regional caliber competitions. So this is opportunity number one. And it will be new. And to go play well and win a series like this would be huge. I mean, it doesn't mean you are a super regional team. Um, if you lose the series, it doesn't mean that you're not. We've seen this go a lot of different directions early in the season. The rankings don't – I couldn't tell you what the rankings are. I have not looked. I really don't care. I just care about the performance on the field. And knowing if that is done properly, then all the rest of it, as the dust settles on the back end of the sea, it'll take care of itself. But I want them to understand the importance of this and also the correlation between what it feels like if you do have to go to a super regional venue with all that's on the line. Like, I want them to feel that right now. You mentioned on Tuesday the the Carson and the shuffling of the order of the weekend rotation. Has that been settled? Is it moving them back to Saturday or maybe all the way to Sunday? Just a Sunday. We We thought – if we have a chance to do it right now, like he tweaked his leg stretching before he ever got onto the mound Friday. And it's a minor thing, but geez, this time of year when the pitch counts are kind of over the top, you're, you're not into the nineties and hundreds. I mean, we didn't get close to that with anybody. So it made more sense. Why not just give him two days and all these guys are going to have to throw and why is going to have to get out there and do his thing. And Whitaker's going to have to do his thing. And, um, man, great to see Armstrong throw the way he threw in Oxford was exceptional in relief Tuesday. Uh, Kirkland will be back fresh. I'm glad we didn't have to use Kirkland and Whitaker Tuesday night. So we're kind of recalibrated and moving the guys around. It, it wasn't a huge deal either way. It didn't change their timing. And if anything, it just it really just protected Carson and moving Bo Meister up. He didn't throw that much at all. I think he was 58 pitches some, somewhere in there. I think, and Arnold didn't get to that. So no, no problem whatsoever. And then that was the smart, logical thing from a, just a timing and health standpoint. And then just uh, having a, a first few games to look at Tibbs at first base, how do you feel like he's handled that, uh, that move? Well, the athleticism is what I lean on. I think every time something comes up, he's learning from it. It was okay. It wasn't great, and he'll be the first to tell you that. Like, he stretched a little bit too soon, and we work on it. And, you know, those guys take throws at first base every day, and we use the machine to kind of give them some tricky little throws across the diamond where they have bag work and, and making some picks. And 
he made a really nice pick on one of them. The timing of letting that ball travel a little bit so that your your foot lands more as you're catching the ball. If you stretch at first base and that front foot's down, your ability to maneuver and change direction a little bit as that ball runs on you is negated. So having to feel it in the game with the base runners bearing down, whether it's a bang bang play or not, is the concept is that that needs to be secondary, but let's position ourselves and see the ball and work to the ball in the proper timing manner to allow the throws to be number one caught properly. And then number two, if there is a stretch, that's almost a byproduct of the timing and um, catching the ball properly. The stretch, there are plays that a stretch helps, but I think the vast majority of the plays, the stretch itself isn't the end all be all. It's containing the ball, catching the ball, whether it's a lower throw, a ball that's up or a ball that takes him you know, into the running lane a little bit, which those are clearly the most difficult. And those were the ones, I think that was the one that got away from him a little bit um, to his, to his left. So he's trying, he's athletic and it, it just helps us become a little bit more balanced and athletic in the rest of the field. If he can continue to grow at first. I have else, one guys? last thing. I just want, sorry, one last thing. When you talk about the, the, the kind of the, uh, the approach on the road and, and things you've done over the years, are there certain things that you kind of require of the players in terms of how much they're on their phones or how much they're on, you know, how, how, how much freedom do they have or, or do you try to keep it not uh, as much freedom to keep them focused? Do you have methods you, you've developed over time? Well, I mean, we have basic guidelines for what we're doing in the hotels number one um we always meet and do our scouting report stuff and that's probably a 20 minute session you know then we get on that bus and we go to the field and it's game on and we do that every single time we play home or road so they're getting the same style of information at about the same time every time we play a game and sometimes, like, we did it here Tuesday before we got on the bus, and then we got on the bus, and off we go. And when you get off the bus, it is game on. And I, I ask them – people come from all over to watch the team, and I get it. I've, I've seen it everywhere. And, like, in Notre Dame, the players were – it was more of a national team because of the recruiting foundation that we had to do. So when people show up to see – their grandkids, kids on our team play and friends. I just ask them before the game, please limit the distractions as much as you can to get into your pregame routine and focus on what's going on on that field with the conditions that you're going to play in, the lighting, the surface. Like it, it takes everything you have to play well. When things are perfect, it's hard. So trying to keep it compartmentalized as much as we can helps. We try to we try to be logical about what we eat and when. So they're eating a pregame meal at about the same time, whether it's home or road. And Sean has been with me as my operations director of player development. And clearly Chip has done this for 40 years. So meshing the style and knowledge of great minds that, that help, we just try to give them a logical, functional timeline, but try to focus them and get them game ready like, when it's time to go. Uh, so I hope it works. And, and probably of all the things I learned at Notre Dame, when you're on the road for five weeks out of the year, if you didn't play well, like, you would never play a home game. And your season essentially could be in detriment before you ever stepped on your own home field. So the intensity and the magnitude of having to function on the road was, in essence, how we had to start everything at Notre Dame. And I think I learned a lot from that. And, you know, it doesn't mean you're going to go play well, but I think you're, you're prepared, you're prepared to take them on the road. All good. Okay. Thanks guys. Thanks a lot. Good luck. Yep. Thanks guys. Thank you.